Good morning, good morning, hello. Uh, happy Tuesday now, I think it is. Yeah, yesterday was Monday. Time time is hard these days. Um, all right, so yesterday we got through the, we figured out new component library. We actually got one set out and it auto deploys when we push to it in the master branch or the main branch. So that's all good. Uh, now, now I'm thinking about um, authentication is next on the list. So last night I signed up for a um, Auth0 account. Um, sort of explained it yesterday a little bit. The reason why I'm using Auth0 for this is because uh, it's popular with a lot of people, a lot of startups, um, a lot of new developers that are being taught web development. And I think that this is, this is like a good, uh, people will know it and therefore if they want to learn rust and like basically take courses that i'm creating uh this would be like a familiar tool that they could then learn how to implement it at least that's the that's the theory well we'll see if it holds up um now of course not all that surprising uh when All right, but not up it's to the right. I thought I said that to be below it. I guess it. I guess it forgot. Um, when I when I set this entire thing, these are the only uh, applications I do. So I have I have basically the playground application, which is an app that I'm going to destroy. Um, at the end of this, uh, just sort of like to play around with it. Um, it is interesting to see what they're what they they suggest. I think what we're going to do is take a look. Well, okay, there's several different choices. We could also not do a single page app style and use like a um, a server. But you really is a technology for ser uh, single page apps. So I kind of want to, if possible, use the same flow here. We're just gonna have to reintegrate a lot of what they have ourselves. Let's go into view and uh, yes, yeah, so this is uh, view three. I'm gonna see if I can get the view two. Uh, two. Uh, and that's mainly because Vue 3, um, I haven't used yet because the, the dev tools haven't been updated yet. So the Vue 2 ones might be a little bit easier to sort of like look into and sort of like see what, what are they doing? So let us see indeed, what are they doing? Uh, let's see, okay, so we wanna create, create an application um, they need a router. Okay, so we'll uh, go ahead and start implementing some of these things ourselves. So we need, we have U, we have our U component library. We now need a U, ooh, is it like U router? Is it U dash router or U underscore? Dash router, that's what it is. Um, okay, so bringing that in, rest analyzer, are you already done? Okay, that was fast. Um, let's see, I think we need to do like the browser route. Oh, we need the prelude. Oh, you're not done. Okay, you just took a little bit of time to realize that you need to get done. There it goes. Okay, so bring in the prelude and then uh, inside of this div, I think we can do a Browser router. Uh, 
I might have to go look at the documentation. I don't remember if that's exactly what it is. Uh, seems to be happy with it so far. And then, uh, oh, we need like an entire router. In source, please. Okay, so I remember we're gonna have an enum for the route. And we're gonna have, we're gonna do some derive. Uh, it's not gonna be debug, we're gonna derive, um, is it? Okay, it's routable. Okay, so it's all these things. So we want routable, debug, partial equal, clone. Oh, you can implement copy too. Ooh, nice. I'm so used to many of these things not allowing me to implement copy. All right, so then we're gonna have um, home, for example, which means we need to set up a, I think it's something like at or two. Oh, it's at, okay, so at slash home. Then we're gonna create a function I think route. I forgot, I forgot exactly how it works. Uh, I'll have to go. My like, font looks a little bit weird today. Yesterday it wasn't wasn't doing us on this uh, display and now it looks like slightly odd. I have no idea what why it's doing that. Um, okay, so it's gonna be, oh, it's a switch and it takes a reference to the route. That's what it is. So we have a switch function takes a reference to route and we're going to return HTML, right? Yeah. And Interesting. Oh, I guess. I guess yeah, you could pass in like various uh, callbacks and other things here if you really want to. Completely unnecessary though. Uh, so we're gonna match the routes and then send it to where we want to go. Match route. Match arms. Um, and then here we want to go, um, we need a home component. So I'm going to create a pages. Um, and we'll call this home address.
Um, okay. You're not happy. Cannot find home in this scope. We have to find pages and root. Uh, okay, so hold on. Do I have to save? Had to save. Okay, that that's all I need to do. Okay, so now now you're happy. Um, let's see. So we have our switch. Was there anything else we need to do? Now they have a not found, which would load a 404 page. That might be interesting. Um, and then this seems, this seems wrong here. Um, this is going to be, I believe inside of, uh, the main library or wherever we want to like display our wherever we want to display like whatever the contents of the router is. There's gonna be something like this. So that's gonna be in here. We're gonna have a router. So we need to pull in some router. So router for that route, and then we're going to tell it to render equals, and then we run the switch. Okay, then we run router render. And pass it switch. And that's a self closing tab. You don't take that? Okay, hold on. Browser router, browser router. Okay, we have that. Uh, switch route. Oh, it's switch route. Switch route, render equals switch render. And then the switch function here. Okay, that makes it happy. Uh, okay, so we need to start the server. Okay, so here we have our home and you would US playground. Um, so I guess to sort of organize things a little bit better, uh, I'm thinking we can create a route and a page for uh, components to like display off the component library, maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll 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 organize it later. It's it's really just an experimentation type thing. I don't really need it to be super well organized yet. 
Um, okay, so back to you. We have a router. Now they're going to have us install this Auth0, Auth0 Spa JS. Can I, okay, this code takes us to the GitHub. So we can now look through this and see their source code and understand what they're doing when we need to. Oh, it looks like it's written all in TypeScript. That actually might be helpful. Okay, here's index. This is where everything starts. Okay, nice. I mean, worst comes worst, we'll just have to create a, um, a front end, like sort of a GUI package or, or something uh, to just replicate that. Okay, start the application. Create an authentication wrapper. Okay, so they're going to create a special like helper that's going to uh, you can call this and then it, it calls their SDK for you. So first thing I notice they're going to pull in create auth zero client from here. The other thing is like they take this entire thing, which is just normal JavaScript. They export this plugin. Install view options. There, install one of these. This is uh, actually come and see. Is install it here? No. Okay, and then they're adding in this to the prototypes. Then you can just do this dot auth to use auth. So we would probably we would probably want to use something a little bit more. A little bit nicer. Okay, so we'll have to keep this in mind to come back and like potentially create something similar to this. I'm not gonna create it right away. We're gonna create what we need to. Okay, uh, so apparently the domain and client are non-sensitive values. However, they still don't recommend uh, committing source control. So basically, I mean, they're in the browser. Nothing in the browser is really, can really be considered that sensitive. But these should be environment variables that are loaded up. Uh, we had some trouble with environment variables with, um, uh, what was it, with uh, a Windows with you. Let's see if we get any better with um, uh, Mac and, and you. So here I'm going to create a, so the, the only times that I can do this on screen, we're going to use um, test env uh, equals Something like that. Now, and I load that. Uh, so we're gonna need glue so I can log things out. Let's 
bring in I guess here in the main library. Perhaps right here we can say let um, test and v equals something like that. And that's what we call this, right? Test env. Actually, I should just be able to uh, display this here, shouldn't I? Uh, let's do that. Environment variable test env not defined. Do I need to load it some other way? That's um. I know that URS actually talks about it a little bit somewhere. It's common to, to customize the build environment by using environment variables. Since the app is running the browser, we can't read the environment variables at runtime. The standard env macro can be used to obtain a value of an environment variables at compile time. Oh, so am I not able? I have to actually set this as an environment variable, aren't I? Londo Spark, hello. Uh, hopefully we're doing good. How are you doing today? Uh, also, you found it, right? This is core macros. What if I do standard? Oh, that's the same thing. Okay. I wonder if I'm going to have to set an invite. Um, I can't use something like um, like to load the environment environment variables, like uh, whatever it's called. But we can we can maybe like load it actually into the environment. So we have to come here. Can I? Um, Nice source dot env. Oh, probably not. You're just about to go into a meeting. Well, have fun and good luck with your meeting. You're gonna you're trying to work with uh, auth in uaxim at the moment for personal project. Oh, awesome! Yeah, we're just starting on the auth journey now, so we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, uh, how far I get and if it's going to be any helpful to you. Um, hopefully it is, but uh, regardless, good luck in your meeting. So if I source you and then uh, restart trunk again. Oh, testing V not defined. So for the front end part, I I want to serve it by putting it onto a uh, S3 bucket and then using um, uh, CloudFront to sort of like serve that up. Um, I think that's sort of like a good pattern for front ends. 
and server we I haven't decided what I need a server for yet uh, there's gonna be some things we're gonna want a server for um, but uh, if if I can't figure out uh, for um, in you to like to go like the spa type off with odd zero then I'm gonna have to use a server to do the off and then that would that, that changes things around a little bit so there's going to be a server somewhere in this but uh, where exactly uh, is to be determined. Okay, so so, uh, um, okay, so you're you're upset because this is not defined. Uh, but I want you to load. So you couldn't find it. Okay, so they... You're having to use Discord and build the server out. Oh, yeah. Um, I do a lot of serverless stuff at work, so a lot of that is attractive to use, but it's also for like what I'm going to be doing, it's going to be cheaper in the short run to put everything on the single VPS and then break it out into more serverless as I get more traffic, more people sign up, that kind of stuff. So we're gonna start with a, we're gonna start with like not, like very minimal cloud, cloud stuff. I need to be, I need, I need money before I can start doing like all the fun serverless things. It, it, it's surprising, it can get expensive really fast. You don't know web anymore, um, it's, um, it's a fascinating world. It like it has changed so much in the last six to eight years, absolutely. But things are so much better now. Uh, the tooling for like checking things out is amazing. So I am uh, I'm in a happy place with this. Um, okay, so that didn't create the environment variable. Maybe I need to do it more, more correctly. So what if I do like export, uh, what is this called? Test env. Test env equals, uh, we'll do testing and env. Okay. Serve. Now you're not yelling at me. Ooh, testing in V. Okay, so that set up an environment variable. So that's that's available to me. I wonder if we're gonna want to set up a Docker container because then I can set up environment variables really easily inside of that. You has made you enjoy some front end development though. So gotta agree with that. Yeah, it's um use a use an entirely different beast, but at the same time, it's not at all. It's very fascinating. It's like okay, Rust as an alternative to TypeScript almost. That's that's kind of what it feels like, because it's still just a front end framework, and it feels like a front end framework that you know, a la React or Vue or Angular. It actually feels to me like a combination between Angular, React, and Vue which I really like a lot. There's there's some things that I like of all three of those frameworks. And uh, so far, you has a lot of that together. Now there are some negatives to it. Like uh, there's a lot of boilerplate you have to write in, um, in you. So not super thrilled about that. That being said, there's some you hooks that I wanna play around with that are supposed to be um, Fixing a lot of that, making it making it a lot easier. Um, okay, so I got an environment variable there. Can I tell Trunk to load a file that has environment variables?
Okay, so there's a config. So I can go to a config file. Oh, and I can do config here. So I could do truck config help. Oh, I can only just show. I can't do anything else. Okay, that's not really helpful. Maybe serve will have something. It's not really helpful. Um, okay, so I need to set up actual real environment variables to, to go with this. So we could create a wrapper command for trunk serve that will load some basic environment variables. But I think the real answer to this would be switch to start using Docker. And then in Docker, we set up some environment variables inside of there. And that would be a little bit easier. Because in something like GitHub Actions, where I would be building and deploying this from, uh, it's super easy to set up environment variables, and we can use GitHub Secrets to like set those. It's like, oh, this is your domain. This is like all of your other information and stuff. Okay, so what are we gonna do for that? We're going to create. Um, I always forget. I always for I always need to go look up the Docker file reference. Okay, so we're gonna start with from. Um, base image. I think, I think we can just use Rust. It's latest. Um, let's see. What do I need to run in that? Uh, well, I do know, let's see. I don't know if I need run at all. Um, command, I want... Um, let's see, for this command, I want it to run, to actually just do a trunk serve, probably. Um, we want to expose 8080. Uh, we'll have some environment variables. Okay, so it's key equals. So uh, env and then the key, so then we'll do this as test in the equals hello from Docker. Now I don't necessarily want to do add or copy because uh, this is the image. I want to be able to develop and have it like continuously run in here, oh, which is where that like that um, uh, I guess like the, the um, trunk server comes in. So we need a volume. Uh, so in volume, yeah, I usually, I've been liking to use code because like it's my code that I'm putting in there. Um, for this specific one, it is root that runs by default. I would have to create a user, I believe. I really wish that Docker would add in the ability to like just, oh, if I just say a user, it can like just create a user for me. 
and just like have something in in the docker file to do that to do that i don't see why they well okay there's plenty of reasons why they couldn't because not everything is going to be based upon like an ubuntu or a debian like the, the commands might be slightly different based upon the operating system but it would be nice if like i could i guess i could start from a different one so create create like a master docker image that i use that has like another user in it it's probably probably the best thing to do uh work there so everything after that so we need to do work there code Now, a health check is going to be interesting. I might want to do like a ping or something. Uh, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. This is more of like an experiment to see see how nicely this works. And then shell your... Okay, so I, th I think this will work. No, I haven't ever used the Docker, these tools. Um, oh, Docker's not running. Maybe. Oh, it's starting up. Um, okay, so now can I create... I want to create this as an image. So if I save you, move the dangling images. Okay, so apparently no, not all my images are being used. Okay, I have to, I have to create this manually. So I do a. There's my Docker file. I'm gonna do a Docker build dash T circer uh, slash. I just sort of namespace these out of um, familiarity. Uh, I guess like in case I ever push them up. Um, and then this is gonna be, this be you. I guess it's gonna be just you, you dev, right? It's like we'll call this. Um, we'll just call this you. And then here's the Docker file. Okay, so that's created, so I should now be able to start that and run it. And I do that from in here. So here is books are for you. You can see that. No, okay, so I have to create a container from this. Okay, interesting. Um, I guess this just lets me to see what I have, not actually do anything. So we're gonna do a Docker run. Um, I don't think that I need to IT this. We can background it with a dash D. Um, I know we're gonna have to give it a volume. Uh, so I want a volume of here, slash code. Um, we want port 8080 to 8080. Um, is there anything else? Uh, the environment variables, we've already set that one in there. I mean, I could override and add more environment variables here if I want to at runtime.
I think this would be it. Uh, so then we're gonna do Berserker U, latest, and run. In. So I think that's well it hasn't crashed according to that. No, oh, you have. Oh cool. All my all my course stuff that I was playing around with. I should I should clean that up sometime. Um oh I forgot to give it a name. So distracted distracted Montal. Montalcini. Um, okay, let's see why you crash. We're gonna do Docker logs. Oh, trunk not found. We need to install everything that we, we need to install that stuff. Okay, so first of all. So we need to do a run. Oh, we're gonna need to add this, add that, and then also this. Did I really catch? just got you. Okay, so we're gonna install trunk, install this one. We're good to go. Save. Let's try this again. So I was looking through the documentation for Auth0. It looks like um, absolutely worst case scenario, you can use Auth0 by sending it directly a username and password and having your backend deal with it. Um, it is not recommended at all and you lose a lot of the features that Auth0 gives you because you can't use like social Auth anymore. Um, it's just their own Auth. Uh, but that's like, that's something you'd use for like embedded servers or, or something like that. So if I put like a U, I guess like a U in a server on like a little Raspberry Pi and I wanted that, no, even that would, would do it. I guess it's more of like um, if you're running on something that doesn't have access to a browser, so it's an embedded application, but you still have the ability to log into it, you, you can do it. So looking at this, um, okay, so they're, they're gonna set all that stuff up. Uh, we're gonna need this information. So our domain and the client ID, which I can get from Auth0. And then this is where our code starts to happen. So in main.js, okay, so view.use, Interesting, so they're passing in domain and client ID there, so does that mean it comes in here somewhere? Where do they get that? Wait, is it down here? Oh, I think, I think this might be it. Uh, the options, 
use auth zero is up here. Okay. I hit tab back to that. They're taking the rest of the options. I think their domain is now inside of Oh, this object, oh, which is instead of coming here, so it's, now they should be able to have access to like domain. And I'm wondering if they're just passing that straight into like the Auth0 clan or something. Interesting, okay, we'll, we'll have to play around with this a little bit. Let's see, did you finish? You did, okay, so now we can do our Docker run again. Uh, this time, we're gonna give it a name. Um, I call this like you, just you. Um, okay, so you're running and you're up. Okay, so we see this on port 8080, which means I should be able to come here and hit it running oh 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 trunk serve is still running this is this is because it's the first time it's running inside of this container. It's taking a long time. Because it's building it on a sort of like a more Linux environment, because it's running on a virtual machine, uh, that's, that's why it's gonna take a little bit of time. Now, future ones should be a lot faster. Okay. Glue twice. Oh, is it because they're using glue 0 0.4 and I'm using glue 0 0.7? Maybe? Here we go. Oh, error. Unsupported architecture. Unsupported architecture, huh? That's no fun. Um, how do we want to take care of this? 
caused by error from asset pipeline failed downloading release archive I wonder I wonder if it's because of like this is a Mac with the M1 Max or Pro or whatever chip. Um, it probably has something to do with that. And I could try later on the Windows machine to see if it has the same problem. My Linux computer is not working right now. Um, I've it's got a bad disk drive, uh, and I need to I need to get a buyer replacement and, and replace that. So. That's out. That's out for a while. Um, I guess what we'll do to move forward, uh, we'll write a really quick script and I won't do this. We'll figure out how to work with this later. I don't need this Docker file right now. Um, if I want this like test environment, uh, we could create like a start script. Um, I want to look at what our config options are for for trunk. Progress. Okay, so there's a trunk RS file that we can create. see anything for environment variables unfortunately oh, wait maybe maybe we can use a hook so there's some hooks here we can do command um, okay so we can do command maybe like source or export So we have stage pre-build, build, and post-build. It executes after the rest of the build is complete, just before the staging directory is copied over. So I need probably pre-build. Even before the HTML file is read, okay. By default, the command is spawned directly and no shell is used. Uh, I don't know if that's right. It's in parallel. So maybe maybe this one will work too. Let's try it. Let's try it. So we need a what was it called? A trunk that Tomal capital T. And specifically, I want this one right here. So we want hooks, uh, build. So I could do this sh, and I want to do export test env equals. Hello, 
from truck. Did I take all this down? No. Docker, stop you. Okay, so we're going to do a trunk serve again, and that should find that... Um, Okay, here it is. Spawned hook. It runs this. Good to know that that's just out there. So if I do a build, I bet it also does that. And I'd have to use some kind of obfuscating method. Um, okay, so server listening. Uh, we have testing an ENV still. Um, test ENV is still not visible inside of here. So that's, uh, that's not working unless I need to tell it something else. Let's try testing ENV 2. No, it does not like that. Okay, so um, even though this runs, it's probably running in a different, okay, and something different. Okay, so that's, that's not gonna work. So if I want environment variables, we're gonna set a .env where we'll have like test env2 equals testing. Um, I want to load through these. So I want to let's touch um, I guess like start and just be a shell script. All right, so I want to loop through everything in there. And then if I remember correctly, I can just do a um, for line in, I think I have to cat it. So is it like cat uh, env? I believe so, and if I add in a second line to this. So, test env1. Oh, that did not like that at all, okay. If I have spaces in there, that's going to be trouble. I would need to, um, it's going to kind of work, but I would need to do it based on line breaks. I think for the most part, I'm not going to have any line breaks. And so I think, I think this is going to kind of work as long as I just do fun stuff like this, then, then these are different lines. Okay. So back to our start. We're going to loop through our um, environment variable. So that's going to be for line in. Then I want to um, export.
And then after all this is, we're gonna use a trunk surf. Hey, and there we go. We get testing like this. Uh, and if I update you, testing one, and my first, okay. Oh, with the quotes too, nice. So this is how we can get, and also the other thing I noticed is this did not uh, pollute, it did not like put anything into the terminal for me, so. I'm gonna be relatively protected if I put the things in there. So, uh, next stop, uh, get ignore. EMV, you are not allowed. Come in here and it's gonna be the last time that, that you get to see this, hope, hopefully. Um, We need a domain and a client ID. So we're gonna have a auth0 domain. Okay, save that, move that from there and I'm gonna vim that off screen. And grab that from here too. Where's my mouse? There you are. Okay, so what's the first thing I need? I need off zero domain. You are, yeah, all one, all one line. That's fine. Um, and then the client ID is you. So close and save. I don't like that it's actually just here in my VS Code. I I need to um. I need to tell this to not display things. And I, I forget how to like hide. Or like the filter files. Uh, based upon if they're, oh, files exclude. Okay, this add pattern, uh, env. There it goes. Okay, now can I even find it? No, okay, not, nice. Now I uh, hopefully shouldn't be able to accidentally expose that to all of you. I mean, I can still vim it, you know, on on screen, but at least at least VS Code will will have a, a better chance. Um, okay, so I can now grab these. Okay, so we're we're gonna continue through. I want to go back to. I should open this in the other browser. Just close that. Okay, so now I have client, uh, domain and client ID here. Okay, so install the plugin, which we don't have right now. Um, log into the app. So in login, they're gonna have, okay, so in home, So, ask off. Okay, if you're not loading, so auth, are you loading? So, where is loading? Is loading a function? That is not a function, that is a property. So, in this wrapper, which is up here. 
Okay, so they just have something where loading is true by, by default. So I wonder if we can do this as a struct that we then load and use. And I wonder if it's going to be different all around. Okay, so if it's, if it's not loading, I'm going to open up this file twice. Okay, so if you're not loading, which we notice is just, um, it's set to true here. And then when do you set loading not true? It's loading equals true, okay. When it, Okay, whenever you start something, it starts in loading two. Oh, then after everything is done, loading gets set to false. So I wonder if we're gonna use some kind of like um, state management for this, like maybe in the UDEX store. Okay, so if we're not loading, then if we're not authenticated, show the login button. And if we are authenticated, show, wait, no. If we're not authenticated, show login. If we are authenticated, show the logout. Okay. And so is authenticated is also just a Boolean here. That seems easy enough. Um, because I'm not sure exactly where to store this information. I'm thinking a UDEX store right now and then now that will cause things to reload this is just a this is just like a class no it's just a object no it's a function there's a function that returns an object oh a view instance okay simply a view object So if I create a struct and then I can pull that in, if I want something across different files, that essentially is just a state. So that would be a UDAC store most likely. Uh, so we can, we can set up UDAX for this. I think it's UDAX functional that we want. Um, and let's say we're gonna have a store probably just down here in source. Uh, is there is Unix functional? Is there a prelude here? Oh, no prelude here. Okay, so we just create the store. So in this case, this is going to be an auth store. So I think we're going to have like multiple stores in this one. This will be an auth 
store. Um, I think I'm going to have to go in and take a look at it a little bit more. So, uh, Oh, it just derives clone and default. That, that's all we care about. So. Drive. Debug's probably fine too. Clone. Default. Um, so then inside of here, we're going to. So the is is authenticated I think uh, loading and is authenticated are the two things we're gonna start with so load uh, hub loading full hub is authenticated it's also a boolean um, I want loading to be true by default, so because of that, I want to now override this. Uh, which means we don't manually set this. Uh, okay, so self. Loading, I want you to be true. Is authenticated. Um, this is going to be false. Um, and so now in our home, we should be able to grab that out. And uh, I guess like we'll just show a button, right? So in home, let um, something equals do a use store. Uh, you are using a basic store. Oh, do I need, do I need Udux also? I think I need Udux also. This one has a crate loop. Okay, so then you're gonna be a basic store, um, and then that's gonna be the auth store. Okay, so then we're gonna get our state. Um, we're gonna map from the state, we're gonna get our store. Now, um, Somebody, somebody this morning or last night uh, sent me a message on a, a comment on one of the videos saying like, hey, why don't you just return a tuple and then you can destructure and just use a single use store statement. I'm like, that is kind of brilliant. And uh, that, is, that is an awesome idea. So I'm gonna start doing that now. Uh, so we're gonna grab uh, we need the is loaded and we need the, um, we need both of them. So we're going to do s dot loading s dot 
is authenticated. We're going to get these out. Do I have to clone them? They implement copy because they're booleans. That should be fine, right? Then we'll unwrap our default. So then in here, we can now say loading is authenticated. Really, I want this to be like offloading. Okay, so then inside of here, we can do our if statement, right? So if, um, if auth loading, so if this is false, then um, go ahead and then choose if, uh if is authenticated okay so if we're is authenticated then i want to display the button for logout uh so we'll have button something like that I don't see any errors in VS Code, but oh, um, yes, we're always it was always a false. So of course, of course that. Now, if I were to come back in here and say. If offloading is true, there we go. Man, this is a lot faster on this computer. Um, the Windows computer is so much slower running running um, you. Uh, okay, so we now we now have that capability. I'm running out of time, so I don't know how much. I, I don't think we're gonna go too much farther today, but uh, we sort of like have a, a direction which we, we're doing, which is I'm figuring out sort of like following along with this example of like, hey, this is what you're going to do. And then we have to re-implement this thing and this thing together uh, for as much as we, we need, really. And then later on, we can decide, do we need to uh, put that into its own library and like De own deployable library, maybe like a UAuth0 or, or something like that. It would be really nice if I could put this into a hook. Um, so that might be something we learn too for this. Um, okay, so that would be good there. So then, okay. That's showing these buttons, and then later on in the home.view file, we have login and logout methods. So login, we then call login with redirect. So that comes here. Login with redirect takes an O, which we don't have here. Oh, it takes an, uh, it takes an option. some kind of object. And then we call this auth zero client login with redirect. So that's now to here. We have to find login with redirect here.
Here's okay. Here's login with redirect. It takes in an any object. That that's cool. Thank you for the the strong type here. Um. Oh, okay. Wait. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's a, a generic any. Um. Oh, it's default is any. I think that's what that is. Okay, so the options, redirect options is this type T app state uh, with its default being empty. Okay, we did redirect method, URL options. Okay, so. We grab that out of options. Interesting. They build an authorized URL. So they figure out what the URL is gonna be. And then they do a window location redirect to that URL. Okay, that may not be too hard. We, we should be able to do this just fine. So I think we're going to, uh, I think we're gonna do this tomorrow. Uh, figure out the redirect this, I don't think this is gonna be that hard. Um, we do have to do a window dot um, location. That that thing that may be the hardest thing. Uh, maybe glue can help us out with that. And if not glue, um, we have websys. We'll, we'll we'll be able to figure it out. And send send somebody on their way. Um, and then we have to figure out like, how to build this URL and like what what exactly that is happening. But uh, I think that shouldn't be that hard, I would assume. Um, so that being said, that's all, as I mentioned, coming up uh, tomorrow. So let's go ahead and clean up our code here. Um, according to you, I don't have any errors or warnings, which I guess is true. Go ahead and no.env in here. We're happy. We are starting to work on off. Send this on up. And okay, that is that has been deployed out. Um, all right. Everybody, I will be back tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time to continue working on this. Um, I am uh, I'm looking forward to uh, actually getting a login window to appear, which I think we're closer than uh, than it might feel. Um, uh, I'm gonna be live. Should I be live every day this week. So um, if I don't catch you tomorrow, maybe one of the other days of the weekend, and then a long day on Sunday. So with that, have a great rest of your Tuesday, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye.